Hi, this is Kent Lee and I teach computer science at Luther College. And in my previous video, I talked about how to convert a base 10 number to a base 2 number. Uh, in the RAM of a computer, we have bytes, and a byte is capable of storing a number. I said a byte is capable of storing a number between 0 and 255. Well, I lied just a little bit. Uh, if we want to represent a positive number, only positive or non-negative numbers, then a byte can store values between 0 and 255. But if we want to store a value, if we wanted to store values that could be both positive and negative, we have 256 different combinations of values that can be stored, but they have to be split between the negative and the positive, so that means that in a byte we can store numbers that range from basically a minus 128 to a positive on up to a positive 127. So if we want to store numbers that are signed, numbers that are both positive and negative, in a byte we have to choose values that are somewhere in between uh, 100, a negative 128 and a positive 127. It does turn out with negative numbers we do have to decide how many bits we're willing to work with and I'm going to say for the purposes of this demonstration I'm willing to work with 8 bits or just one byte. So let's take a negative number and see how it might be stored in the computer, a particular negative number. And let's maybe look at uh, a negative 42, and that's base 10. And again, I would like to see what is that, what does that look like as a base 2 number. Now in base 2, we don't just write a negative sign in front of it because there's no place to store a negative sign in the RAM. Uh, all we can store are zeros and ones, so there is no place for a negative sign. So what we're going to do is figure out some representation for this negative number that makes sense. And I think it makes sense for us to first of all start by looking at what is 42? What does 42 equal as a base 2 number? Okay, so 42 base 10 and we could convert that using the same algorithm we talked about in the the same steps we talked about in the last video to a binary number and it turns out that that would come out to if I did that calculation it would come out to uh, I'm sorry let's make sure I get that right here okay so it turns out that that would come out to um, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. If I added it up, let's just add it up quick here. That's 2 plus 4 plus no 16 plus 32. So two, 32 plus 4, I'm sorry, 32 plus 8 plus 2. And that adds up to 42. So this is 42 base Two. Okay, so what we would like if we're going to represent negative numbers in the computer without um, without representing a minus sign, what we would like is to be able to take 42, a negative 42 base 10, and add it to add a negative 42 base 10 to 42 so that we end up with zero in the end. And we'd like the same thing to happen here on the other side of the equal sign. We want to figure out what is it that we would add to this number to get 0. And it turns out doing addition in binary is quite easy because all we have to know is what is 0 and 1 add up to. So we can probably carry that out here. Um, Let's see, if I want to add 0 plus something to get 0, so what I would like down here are 8 zeros when I'm all done. There's 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So if I want to add something to 0 to get 0, I'm going to add 0. If I want to add something to 1 to get 0, I need to add 1, and that's going to be to carry a 1. If I add 
So I've got 1 plus 0 plus what to get 0, and I suppose that would be a 1 that I would add to it there, and that would be carry a 1. Um, 1 plus 1 plus something to get 0, well, that would be a 0, but I'm going to carry a 1 again. 1 plus 0 plus something to get a 0, that would be a 1, okay? Carry a 1, 1 plus 1 plus something to get a 0, that's going to be a 0, and again, carry a 1. 1 plus something plus 1 to get a 0, and carry a 1. 1 plus 0 plus something, that would be a 1, to get a 0. And then I'd have to carry a 1, and there'd be 1, 1 out here, but I'm going, because I decided that I'm only willing to work with 8 bits, we just take that last one here and we go ahead and throw it away. We don't look at that. So this right here, it turns out, is a negative 42 base 10. So our answer up here, what is a negative 42 base 10 is 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. Now, so that's base base two. That must be a negative uh, a negative number. Now, if I looked at this value here, this binary value, and I wanted to know whether it was negative or positive, um, the only way I can know if it's negative or positive is for somebody to tell me that it's a that it's a signed number. If I don't know that it's a signed number, this could easily be equal to 214 as an unsigned number. So if I were to convert this to a to a decimal number to base 10 and I as a unsigned number it would come out to 214. So I have to be told that this is a signed number and if it's a signed number then I can tell I can easily tell it's negative because this leftmost digit is a 1. So it turns out that all negative numbers that are signed numbers have a 1 as the leftmost digit. And if they don't have a 1, here's 42 base 2. If they don't have a 1 in the leftmost digit, then they're positive, then it's a positive value if it's a signed number. So again, you have to know whether it's signed or unsigned first, but if you know it's a signed number, the leftmost digit will tell you whether it's positive or negative. Okay, so it turns out that there's an easier way to convert um, this number to its uh, to its binary equivalent, and I'm going to show you how to to its. Uh, it, there's an easier way to find out what the uh, what the binary equivalent of a negative number is, and I'm going to show you that now. So, if I have a minus 42 base 10, um, and I want to know what is that equal to base 2. Well, again, I can start with 42 base 10 and convert that to uh, base 2. And when I do that, I find out again, just to write it down here one more time, that we have 0, 0, 1, 0, and uh, 1, 0, 1, 0, uh, base 2. So to convert this to its negative equivalent, what I can do is something called the ones complement. Okay. So the ones complement, ones complement, I'm not sure if that's spelled right, I think it might be an I there. So the ones complement is found by, is found by converting all the zeros to ones and all the ones to zeros. So um, if I take that number up above there and I convert all of the zeros to ones, and all of the ones to zeros, I end up with that as my equivalent there. So let's look here and see. Uh, convert all of the ones to zeros and all of the zeros to ones. So this is the ones complement here of 42, of a positive 42. And if I add one to it, if I add one to the ones complement, in binary, so that is a 0, 1 plus 1 is 0, carry a 1, and 
a 1 there, and then I don't have any more carries, so I just have to write down the rest of them. 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. And it turns out that this here, right here, is the 2's complement. It's called the 2's complement. Okay, and it is equal to, that is, a minus 42 um, base 10. So the 2's complement of a positive value is its negative uh, counterpart. So that is 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. Sorry, that's not correct. So one one zero one zero one one zero base two. So again, to convert from a positive to its negative counterpart, what we need to do is first of all compute the ones complement. The ones complement is found by flipping all the zeros to ones and all the ones to zeros, and then we find the twos complement by adding one to the ones complement. So if we add one to the ones complement, we get the twos complement here. That's equal to the negative counterpart of a positive number. So, um, so again, we have to, to know that this is a negative number. We have to be told that it's a signed value and then we can determine that it's negative by looking at the leftmost digit. It is very important that you decide when you're working with negative numbers how many bits it is that you're willing to work with. Um, because if you with signed numbers, if you have to know the number of bits that you're going to work with because there's going to be a potentially a carry bit, but you want to ignore the carry bit out of the last um, addition that you would do. So um, that's it for now.